Don't go away. Tonight, as usual, we'll be illuminating. Since the earliest times, man has venerated the element of fire above all others. Even the most untutored savage seems to recognize in the flame something closely resembling the volatile fire that he believes dwells within his soul. The mysterious, vibrant, radiant energy of fire was beyond his ability to analyze, yet he felt its power. It could be debated that his man sat huddled in the cold in the darkness of the night, watching as lightning struck a tree, and the tree burst into flames, that man in his primitive form believed that he saw the presence of God. Indeed, it may have been this fire in lightning form that began the tale of the angel of light flung to the earth after rebelling against God and man picking up a burning branch keeping it alive the living fire when it began to grow smaller and the light grow dim he would quickly rush and get another branch and light it a fire and watch it until maybe he fell asleep and it went out. And the next time he found a tree burning from a lightning strike, maybe there were two or three in the party and maybe they took turns and kept it going. And maybe it was this fire that caused man to ignite the first spark of intelligence and for the first time have original thought. For the philosophers of fire were certainly the first leaders, the first priests. They hoarded the secret from the others. And that has been their pattern on to this day. The vibrant, mysterious, radiant, energy of fire was beyond his ability to comprehend. Yet he felt its power. And knowing that the sun was the only thing in the heavens that brought warmth, it was then a very short distance to the connection that the fire came from the sun, and the sun was the symbol of the mighty force of God. And of course, many believe that the Son was indeed God. The fact that during thunderstorms, fire descended in mighty bolts from heaven, felling trees, and otherwise dealing destruction caused the primordial human being to recognize in its fury the anger of God. Later, when man personified the elements and created the multitudinous pantheons, which now exist and have existed throughout history, he placed in the hand of his supreme deity the torch, the thunderbolt, or the flaming sword, and upon his head a crown, its gilded points, symbolizing the flaming rays of the sun and all crowns, on all of the heads of kings and emperors and mighty sultans have been the symbols of the rays of the sun. The mighty Zeus who dwelt upon Mount Olympus and was the patriarch of the gods held in his hand a bolt of lightning. Mystics have traced sun worship back to early Lemuria and fire worship to the origin of the human race. In fact, the element of fire controls to a certain degree both the plant 
and the animal kingdoms, and is the only element which can subjugate the metals. And, indeed, without the sun there would be no life on this planet. Indeed, if we were just a little closer to the sun, there could be no life on this planet. And if we were just a little farther away from the sun, there could be no life on this planet, at least, at least not life as we know it. Either consciously or instinctively, every living thing honors the orb of day. The sunflower always faces the solar disk. The Atlanteans were sun worshippers, they say in the legends of Atlantis. While the American Indians are remnants, at least of the earlier Atlantean people, they say in the mysteries, still regard the sun as the proxy of the supreme light giver. And many, many early peoples believed that the sun was a reflector rather than the source of light, reflecting the power and the beauty and the energy of God himself. And it is evidenced by the fact that they often pictured the sun god as carrying on his arm a highly polished shield on which was chased the solar face. Now this shield, ladies and gentlemen, catching the light of the infinite one, reflected it to all parts of the universe. During the year the sun passes through the twelve houses of the heavens, where, like Hercules, it performs twelve labors. The annual death and resurrection of the sun has been a favorite theme among unnumbered religions. The names of nearly all the great gods and saviors have always been associated with either the element of fire, the solar light, or its correlate, the mystic and spiritual light invisible. What you may now call the ether. Jupiter, Apollo, Hermes, Mithras, Bacchus, Dionysius, Odin, Buddha, Krishna, Zoroaster, Zarathustra, Phohai, Yao, Vishnu, Shiva, Agni, Balder, Hiram, Abif, Moses, Samson, Jason, Vulcan, Uranus, Allah, Osiris, Ra, Bel, Baal, Nebo, Serapis, and King Solomon, Sol, Om, On, are some of the numerous deities and supermen whose symbolic attributes are derived from the manifestations of the solar power and whose names, ladies and gentlemen, indicate their relationship to light and fire. For Solomon, Sol Am An, is the name of the sun in three different languages. Most of you were not aware of that. According to the Greek mysteries, the gods gazing down from Mount Olympus repented that they had made man, and I bet you they still do, and never having given to the primitive creature an immortal spirit, they decided that no harm would be done if the quarreling, dissenting human ingrates, the whimpering sheeple of the world, were destroyed forever. And the place where they had been left vacant for a nobler race. And I bet there are many who believe that today. Really, look around you. Why should anybody come to save us? Are you sick? Or maybe you just can't see and can't hear. Discovering the plans of the gods, Prometheus, in whose heart was a great love for struggling humanity, determined to bring to mankind the divine fire which would make the human race immortal so that not even the gods could destroy it. So Prometheus flew to the home of the sun god, and lighting a tiny reed with the solar fire, he carried it to the children of the earth, warning them that the fire should always be used for the glorification of the gods and the unselfish service of each other. Prometheus, you see, was a tremendous lightning strike.
and the myth. The story of Prometheus is the metaphor of the ancients used to explain what happened because they didn't know anything about lightning or electricity, or, for that matter, much about fire itself. They burned the homes of their enemies. You see, men were thoughtless and unkind. They took the divine fire brought them by Prometheus and used it to destroy one another. They burned the homes of their enemies. Most recently, in Sweden or Switzerland, before that in Waco, Texas, I could go on and on and on, and with the aid of heat, they tempered steel, making swords and armor, and used these instruments to kill each other. They grew more selfish and more arrogant, defying the gods, but they could not be destroyed, for they then possessed the sacred fire. So the story goes. For his disobedience, Prometheus, like Lucifer, remember these are all metaphors for things that man could not understand for his disobedience, Prometheus, like Lucifer, was chained and placed upon the brow of Mount Caucasus, or some pronounce it Caucasus, there to remain with a vulture gnawing at his liver until a human being should master the sacred fire and become perfect. This prophecy was fulfilled by Hercules, who climbed Mount Caucasus, broke the fetters of Prometheus, and liberated the friend of man who had been in torture for so many ages. And remember, Prometheus really represents Lucifer. Hercules represents the initiate who, as his name implies, partakes of the glory of light. Prometheus is the vehicle of solar energy. The divine fire which he brought to men is a mystic essence in their own natures which they must redeem and regenerate if they would liberate their own crucified souls from the rock of their base physical natures. Remember what I told you? You see, according to occult philosophy, the sun in reality is a threefold orb two parts of its nature being invisible. The globe which we see is merely the lowest phase of the solar nature and is the body of the Demiurgus, or, as the Jews call him, Jehovah, and the Brahmins, Shiva, the sun being symbolized by an equilateral triangle. The three powers of the solar disk are said to be co-equal. The three phases of the sun are called will, wisdom, and action. Will is related to the principle of life, wisdom to the principle of light, and action or friction to the principle of heat. You see, by will, they believe the heavens were created and the eternal life continued in supreme existence. In other words, the creation of the universe came from an original, spontaneous thought and by desire was swept into action, and by action, friction, and striving the earth was formed, and the physical universe molded by the lords of the fire. The fire mist passed gradually from the molten condition into its present more orderly state. Thus heaven and nature were formed, but between these two was a great void. For God did not comprehend nature, and nature did not comprehend the deity. The lack, the lack of intercourse between these two spheres of consciousness was similar to the condition of paralysis in which the consciousness realizes the condition of its body. But you see, owing to the lack of nerve connection, is incapable of governing or directing the activities of the body. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, they believe that between life and action there came a mediator which was called light or intelligence, Prometheus, Lucifer, and matters not what you call it. Light partakes of both life and action. 
They believe it is the sphere of blending. An intelligence stood between heaven and earth, for through its medium man learned of the existence of his God. And God began his ministrations to the needs of men. And while both life and action were simple substances, light was a compound, for they believed the invisible part of light was of the nature of heaven and the visible part of the nature of earth. So down through the ages, this light is said to have taken upon itself bodies. And although these bodies have borne witness to that light, the great spiritual truth of the mysteries behind the symbol of the embodied light is that in the soul they believe of every creature within whose mind intelligence is born. There dwells a spirit which assumes the nature of this intelligence. And they believe that every truly intelligent man and woman who is working to spread light in the world is Christened are light end by the actual labor which he or she is seeking to perform. The fact that light, which represents intelligence, partakes of the natures of both God and the earth, is proved, they believe, by the names given to the personifications of this light. For at one time they were called the sons of men, and at another time, the sons of God. The initiate in the mysteries was always instructed concerning the existence of three sons, the first of which, the vehicle for God the Father, enlightened and warmed his spirit. The second, the vehicle of God the Son, enfolded and broadened his mind. The third, the vehicle of God, the Holy Spirit, nourished and strengthened his body. Light is not only a physical element to these people, it is also a mental and spiritual element. And in the temple the disciple is told to revere the invisible sun even more than the visible one, for every visible thing is only an effect of the invisible or causal the generative force represented by an obelisk. And as God is the cause of all causes, he dwells in the invisible world of causation and always in the Trinity and is represented by the symbol in the Greek alphabet, Delta. Delta. As in Lieutenant Colonel James Bobo Gritz of Delta Force. Apuleius, when initiated into the mysteries, beheld the sun shining at midnight, for the chambers of the temple were brilliantly illuminated, although there were no lamps of any kind. The invisible sun is not limited by walls, nor even the surface of the earth itself, because its rays are of a higher vibratory rate than physical substance. You see, they say its light passes unimpeded through all the planes of physical substance. And to those capable of seeing the light of these spiritual orbs, there is no darkness, for they dwell in the presence of limitless light. And at midnight, see the sun shining under their feet. And if you believe that, i got a bridge to sell you. You see, they not only lie to you, they lie to themselves. They not only deceive you, they deceive each other. They not only manipulate you, but they manipulate all those below them who have not risen to the degree of initiation where they understand that they have been deceived on the lower rungs of the ladder and begin to see the light 